Hi, I'm Dave Fornell, the editor of Imaging Technology News Magazine. I'm here on the show floor of RSNA 2014, and I wanted to take you on a tour of some of my choices of the most interesting technology on the show floor. 3D printing from CT, MRI, and 3D ultrasound data sets has really become popular over the last few years for educational purposes and also for training of new radiologists and also for surgical training. New interest in 3D printing includes an expansion into surgical models. If you have a difficult case, you can use a 3D model that's built off of the data sets to see if a certain device or certain type of procedural technique will work using a 3D model before actually operating on a patient, and it could be used uh, for procedural guidance once you're in the OR. At RSNA 2014, there are several companies that were highlighting for the first time 3D printers, uh, components for 3D printers, and also models that could be made and software for slicing and dicing these images. Shown here are some 3D images that were rendered from Materialize using their software and printed by Stratasys, which is the leader in 3D printing for industry. 3D breast homosynthesis was introduced by Hologic a couple years ago at RSNA, and the second competitor on the market is GE Healthcare. They just introduced their 510K cleared Senoclear device. The GE system is supposed to be able to do 3D tomosynthesis with the same dose as a 2D standard mammogram. Tomosynthesis is supposed to be the way of the future with uh, breast mammography. It shoots several images and then creates a uh, three-dimensional view of the breast that can be sliced so individual layers of breast tissue can be taken a look at uh, to look at areas of overlap to see whether it's a tumor or whether it's just dense tissue. 510K pending on this system is a synthetic 2D view mammogram. This is a demonstration of how the operator can roll through 99 planes that have been shot. A plane is very similar to a slice on a CT scan. CareStream Health has been known for its CR and DR systems over the last several years, but expanded into a new imaging modality of ultrasound. Its entry into the ultrasound market is the CareStream Touch, which is a premium level ultrasound system. It is unique in that it is the first premium ultrasound system to use an all touch screen interface. The touch screen panel could be easily wiped down to be sterilized. It uh, eliminates the use of a trackball, which is difficult to sterilize, and utilizes a cut face panel to where finger movements could be felled into grooves uh, so the operator can focus on the patient rather than on the system itself. First time RSNA exhibitor Bearfax Entertainment offers patient calming experience technology. This includes product wraps uh, with various themes to make a device look like a beach scene or even take mobile DR systems and make them look like animals. Their products also include uh, lightweight polystyrene casings that can enclose either an MR or CT system to make these systems look like sandcastles or other structures. They're lightweight enough so techs can easily pull them apart with one person to get uh, to the system to be serviced. There's a trend in pocket-sized ultrasound point-of-care systems that are started a couple years ago when GE introduced the V-Scan system. And this year at RSNA, there were a couple vendors that were showing brand new pocket ultrasound. This version is from Konica Minolta. It's the Sony Image P3. It's a pocket ultrasound system that's designed for point-of-care use. GE introduced its pocket V-Scan ultrasound device a couple years ago. But at this RSNA, they introduced a new dual probe. The probe has a sector transducer for deep imaging on one side, and it has a linear probe for surface imaging on the other. Philips Healthcare took a little different approach on handheld ultrasound. They introduced at RSNA 2014 its new app-based ultrasound. This is 510K approved, but it will not be commercially available until mid-2015. Currently, it uses an Android-based device, such as a phone or a tablet. And over the last few years, it's taken advantage of the ultrasound technology progression, where a lot of the computing power and beam programming power has really been put into the transducer. With the computer power of this system, all of the computing power has now been based within the transducer. So the transducer essentially has become the ultrasound system. The mobile device now just serves as a display monitor and a reporting system. Paris France based Sonoscanner is another exhibitor at RSNA showing a handheld ultrasound system. The ULITE system is CE marked already and is pending FDA 510K. The system is capable of both point of care and was demonstrated at the show for both echocardiography and for uh, fetal imaging. A first-time vendor at RSNA 2014 is Energy Resources International. They displayed a new type of x-ray tube that uses carbon nanotubes to replace the metal filaments to produce the electron beam. The electrons accelerate through the nanotubes at a very high velocity. This has the advantage of producing almost no heat and reduces the electrical consumption by the x-ray tube by 95%.
GE Healthcare unveiled its PET MR system last year at RSNA 2013, but just got FDA 510K approval the week of Thanksgiving in 2014. It integrates both the PET and MR into a single gantry and is able to do simultaneous imaging at once. PET MR is a new up and coming modality in imaging. Philips and Siemens both introduced new systems a couple years ago, and GE is the latest addition to that market. GE also showed its Signet's Pioneer. It's a 3T wide bore system that they're introducing pending 510K. Uh, it has two unique features. One of them is the silent scan technology to reduce the noise uh, a significant amount on the MRI. The second is a 510K pending software called Magnetic Resident Image Compilation. The MAGIC software can do six imaging contrast protocols on MRI in one-third of the time that it would take to do uh, individual scans. In addition, the individual contrast protocols that they do for each one of these scans could be uh, manipulated uh, post-processing after the scan is done. Over the past couple of years, some of the primary CT scanner companies have introduced new detector technology. Toshiba this year at RSNA 2014 is introducing its new pure vision detector. It uses a new uh, ceramic crystal cutting technique which eliminates imperfections in the side of the detectors. This helps reduce the amount of photon scatter from the image and improves image quality. The new detector also uses microelectronics to reduce the amount of electronic noise on images. Set for release in 2015, Toshiba is introducing SureKV. It's a 510K CT dose reduction software that could take into account the patient's size and automates and lowers the tube current for smaller patients. This is partly based on the scanogram scout image. It is an effort to automate CT dose reduction without operator interaction. Toshiba is also introducing a new 510K pending feature called contrast management. It works with Bayer and Nomoto injectors. It automatically records the actual amount of contrast that's injected into the patient during a CT scan, not the total bolus size that was pulled from the shelf. This data is then stored in the packs for future reference with the patient's record. Toshiba is introducing a new interventional lab configuration called the Infinix 4D CT. It's 510K pending currently, but it has 100 installs in Japan already, and they're trying to introduce this configuration to the U.S. market for 2015. It uses an Aquilian Prime 80 or 160 slice CT scanner, which offers image quality directly in the interventional lab uh, above and beyond what you get from conventional rotational angiography 3D imaging. It's aimed at interventional oncology, interventional neuro, uh, emergency trauma bleeds, and structural heart. It allows visualization of smaller vessels and smaller tumors that are not uh, seen traditionally on angiography alone or on rotational angiography. OEM vendor Context Vision is showing a new 3D 4D fetal ultrasound visualization software package. It shows 3D fetal ultrasound in what appears to be true color and it has a variable light source that could be moved around the fetus uh, to change the point of view from the light. The concept of the software is to give a more realistic view of the fetus uh, to the expectant parents. OEM Greyhill at RSNA 2014 was showing its MTCW multi-touch control wheel. This is a replacement for the traditional trackball on ultrasound systems. It allows for better sterility and easier infection control by not having a ball that uh, has to be cleaned. It just has a plain flat surface. This type of technology was demonstrated on a couple new ultrasound systems that were introduced at RSNA and maybe the way of the future. Delphinus Medical Technologies introduced uh, SoftView at RSNA a couple years ago. It recently received FDA this past year and just received FDA for its color transmission data. The system also has a color code to show sound and attenuation differences. The result is similar to what you'd see in an elastography ultrasound image uh, showing stiffness of tissue such as tumors. Philips Healthcare is showing a new work in progress software for MRI called 4D Flow. It uses time resolved phase contrast flow assessment and it can track the blood flow through vessels and actually show uh, similar to tractography where exactly the blood flow is going. One of the areas of research uh, mentioned at TCT and ACC for the future cardiovascular research is uh, on shear stress in vessels and how that may affect uh, various vascular diseases and this is one of the tools that might be used in the coming years. The work in progress software also shows turbulence and the loss of hemodynamic energy in the vessel.